I see somebody's watching, so I'm going to get started. So I made this little snowman person, and I used my Sennelier paints and the Rembrandt metallics. And hopefully y'all had a chance to get it traced onto your paper. So for the paper, I actually used, for the first time, this watercolor paper that is from Artist Loft, it says. It's a level two as opposed to their level one. And it is surprisingly not bad. It is actually, when I looked at the page or the paper on the box, it says that it is from made from Strathmore, it's Strathmore 400 paper. So it's about half the price and you can use a coupon on it at Michael's. So that is definitely something to consider. It is a cellulose based paper. So it does dry a little bit more quickly than your cottons, but it's still not bad at all. So like I said, something definitely to consider. And just like last time with the pumpkin, I took my pattern, which I put a copy of it on all the different links that is in the comments of the classroom page and a couple of the other pages and traced it onto my piece of watercolor paper. Just used a piece of washi tape to attach it. And used some graphite paper and we're all set to go. So I will do that right there. Here are my brushes. I'm gonna use the Princeton Elites again. I will leave him right here so you can see him. I have the Sennelier paints, just like I used last time. And this is that palette that is the 12 plus six where you get the six for free. And when you use that, you also have room. You can see even on the picture, you have room for another six pans. So I bought six separate pans from Dick Blick. They do sell the individual half pans. It ended up costing me about $100 for a $244 set of paints. So I was pretty happy about that. Then I made sure that I swatched it out. And I have my swatches in the same order as my paint palette here. So I see we've got a couple people watching. If you guys could give me a comment and let me know that this is set up okay and oriented all right for you all, I would really appreciate it. Get in a little closer there. Hey, Navon. Good, thanks, I appreciate that. <laughs> Are you all set? Did you happen to have a chance to get your pattern traced? So here I did it real nice and light. Um, I think because your iPad is probably considered a, it doesn't have a Wi-Fi signal maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Great, yep, nice and light because we're gonna be using a lot of really light colors because we want it to look like a snowman. So I'm gonna lower my camera a little bit so you guys can get a little bit more of a zoom in there. See if maybe we can get a little more light on the situation. All right. So I'm going to start painting. Tighten this all up here. Okay, first off I'm gonna spritz my paints, get them to activate.
and I did go over with an eraser to kind of lighten up some of the pencil lines. Let's get him in the shot so y'all can see him or her. He's non-binary. I've had a nice little... I know Wanda is trying to get it set up. She's going to watch at work. Isn't that cool that I can see your comments and I can answer your questions? All right. So first thing, like most of our watercolors, we are going to do the background first. And we have this nice cerulean blue. I'm going to use a little bit bigger brush. So you can either use your regular number eight or 10 brush, or if you happen to have a mop with a good enough point that you can go around your snow person. And I've got my water way over here. So I wet my brush and I'm going to go and I'm gonna wet my background. I don't want it super soaking, which won't happen with this paper anyway because it is a cellulose paper. And I'm not getting super tight around the edges and the outline, but I am going pretty quickly because I do want my paper to be wet enough that my paint's gonna flow for me. And I'm gonna come all the way down to this line down here of the snow where the land and the snow starts. Okay, get some, some water on there. Paper doesn't curl up too badly, so I didn't worry about taping it down. Y'all know me, I tend to work all the way to the edge of the paper. So I'm going to, I've got the cerulean blue, lots and lots of water, I'm mixing it up on my palette here, my dirty palette. Y'all know I use a dirty palette, I'm just a dirty girl apparently. So I'm gonna just tap that in, see it'll flow where my water is. I'm gonna get it up close to my snow person and my edges but I'm not worrying about being absolutely precise I personally kind of like that look where it's a little bit looser and it's not very perfectly defined on the edges I like these mops from Da Vinci because they have really nice points on them. They are made out of a hundred percent blue squirrel tail. So just fill that in. Use your traceable for reference if you're looking at it and going, oh, what line was that? I don't know what that's supposed to be. Just look at the outline on your traceables. Now, if we had lots of time, I might actually sprinkle this with some salt and we'd get a super cool texture. But I don't wanna to have to mess with hitting it with the hairdryer while y'all are watching. So I'm trying to get some, you can kinda of see some variation. And I am gonna take a paper towel and blot up some areas to lighten them up. But pick up some of this and kind of splotch it in there. And yeah, that is a very technical watercolor term, splotching. Also keep in mind this is gonna dry quite a bit lighter. Okay, that looks pretty good. Clean out my brush. Take my paper towel here, kind of wad it up into an irregular shape, and pick some of this up. I 
I think I want a little more color in that. So because we're working on the cellulose paper, your color is not going to move as readily as it would if we were working on 100% cotton paper. So if you are working this on 100% cotton paper, keep in mind that it is going to take a whole lot longer for it to dry. So there's pluses and minuses about both. Okay. Now let's try picking up some of that. There we go. I want it a little bit lighter down towards my land than I do up on top, just like any other sky. I think that looks pretty cute. Clean off my brush. And now we will do our land down here. We did that with, the, I did that with a little bit more of a purple in it. So we've got the dioxazine purple. I'm going to use my number six, Princeton. Does not hold as much water. I don't care if my sky bleeds into my snow, I'm totally fine with that. Just dampen it. We're not trying to get it so it's soaking wet. You don't want to have puddles on it. And the only reason you don't want to have puddles on it is it's a little bit less, more difficult to control. It can kind of be messy, but I don't mind puddles with this because you can get some really cool um, cauliflowers. So I'm going to take a little bit of the dioxazine purple and really dilute that out. I'm just I'm tapping that in and kind of letting it do its own thing. Oop, that's a little dark. I think I might go back and pick up some of that. So I want this piece here that's kind of coming in front to be a little bit darker than this piece that's up here. This little snow drift that our snow person is nestled in. Can you see that? It's a little dark, so I'm just going to take my paper towel and blot some of that up. Oh, I kind of like that texture. That looks kind of cool. I'm going to be doing some swirls and stuff around him as well. So it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just trying to get our color in right now. So if you can see. Okay. I'm gonna smooch this over a bit. fall. <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to let that dry for a few seconds because we're going to be working on the snowman right away and all of this around here is wet and we don't want them all bleeding out into the sky. It gets a little bit muddy if you do that.
All right, dry already. That's the beauty of that cellulose space paper with lots of starch in it. All right, we're gonna do our snowman. And he, she is kind of the reason we're here. So we're going to mix the tiniest, tiny, tiny, tiniest little bit of Payne's Gray. Lots and lots and lots of water. And then I did just touch in an even tinier little smidge of the Burnt Umber because we want to warm that gray up a very small amount. So I want you to see this color. So it's this color right here. And it is almost water. You can see right through it on my palette. It's really, really thin. We can layer more on, but we're just going to create some shadows because, of course, generally your snow is white. So we're going to start getting in some shadows around the areas where the snow would have shadows where the balls of snow, the snowballs are. All um, layered up on top of each other and we want it to not be perfect at least I don't want it to be perfect if you want your snowman to be perfectly smooth and really you know spherical go for it I do not I like mine to be a little bit lumpy so here's my edges I'm gonna start at the bottom here and I'm gonna work my way up to the top and I'm just going to very lightly. Now keep in mind this is going to dark, dry quite a bit lighter than it looks. And I'm tapping that in. And I want to have, like I said, some irregular edges. And I'm going all along my edges where there would be any kind of an overlap. If you have too much water and paint on your brush, go ahead and just tap it off on your paper towel. And I'm just tapping it because I want to be able to kind of see the texture of the snow. Got a little tiny bit more Payne's Gray. I want to darken up this edge here a little bit. And I know that looks really dark. I'm going to pick some of that up so it's not going to end up being that dark. But I do want that edge to be more defined. So I'll clean up my brush and just kind of pick up and move some of that a little bit. And then just draw it down. I'm doing kind of little swirlies. We are going to be going back over this with some highlights of some iridescence. I'll clean up my brush. Pick up a clean tissue. See there's no paint on that corner. And I'm just going to lighten that up a little bit. I know that looks really strong, but wait until we get in the all of these features. It won't look as strong because then we will have something to contrast it against. All right, because this is wet, I'm going to now do this face. Now just take a smaller brush if you don't feel comfortable working with this six. Go ahead, you can go down to a, a three or a two even. Wet your brush first. So you'll dilute that paint even more, pick up some of that paint, tap off any extra drips that you might have. You don't want to be having any drips on the end here. And this is a little bit more precise. And we're going to go around the edge where there would be any shadows to show that he is rounded. He's roundy like the rest of us. Don't worry if you go into the eyes because they're going to be a little black of coal. All 
Okay, clean out your brush, dry it out a little bit, and just move some of that paint in towards the center. Go ahead, dry off your brush, and pick up some of that excess if you want. Ooh, that got kind of crazy down there, didn't it? That's all right, we have gouache, we can go back over it. And just re-wetting it up some of that excess. There we go. I like that much better. Okay, blot up that extra again. Not only is that going to pick up the extra paint, but it's also going to give it a little bit of texture. So now I picked up that little tiny bit darker color like I have here. And I'm going to go kind of up in this corner and underneath the brim of the hat and also down along the edge, bottom edge here, where there would be a shadow from the scarf. Okay, got a little extra water in there, blot that up. I do, while this is wet, not soaking wet, but just a little bit wet. Want to get in some cheeks. So you can use a lot of different colors. You can use opera rose, you can use um, theo violet, you can use the cobalt violet. Um, anything that's gonna give you a pretty pink color. You could even just use your cad red, just really, really thinned out. Very, very thinned out. I don't know why I always like to give snow people a little bit of a cheek probably because you always get rosy cheeks when you go outside in the snow so i've got this very very light you can't even see it on my brush it's so thinned out but i'm going to put a little cheek right here underneath the eye and up to the nose and then you'll see a little bit of that blush kind of underneath the nose here coming down from that eye as well Tap that in, and there again, that is really going to dry light, so don't worry about trying to blend that out. And that there is also going to blend out a little bit and really dry light again. Okay, I'm going to let that dry. All right, this down here is dry enough that we can now do the main body, his thorax. Again, pick up your... And make sure that you go up underneath his arms. Now I am going to leave a little bit of a space between his midsection and his bottom tummy area. And go around my arms, picking up some water so I can let that bleed out. Go in between his buttons, his coal buttons, picking up a little more water. It's really nice because these brushes don't hold a ton, ton of water. So for this type of application where you're working on a smaller area, you don't have to worry about it as much because it's not going to be as apt to get away from you. All right, I want to darken this a little bit. I hope you all can see that. It's really subtle. I used um, Opera, Vi Opera Rose or for the cheeks or Theo Violet if you happen to have the Cotman set, but any pretty light pink that you have. And you can really, really water it out. So if you have Opera Rose, it's really strong. Just add a ton of water to it. Um, you could use Alizarum Crimson too. That works really well also. Okay, 
Okay, so I picked up that a tiny little extra bit of Payne's Gray. Darken this here, kind of is where I've got our shadows going. And because it's still wet, I can tap some of that in, but I'm telling you, it is 99% water. Put a little shadow around his buttons. Maybe a little more shadow underneath his hat here. All right, before that gets too dark on me, I am going to lift a little bit of this up. I'm making a little end here so I don't pick up and then redeposit my paint. Oh yeah, if you've got too much burnt umber in it, you just want, I just liked a little tiny bit of the burnt umber in there so it warms that gray up. Otherwise I think, um, I don't know, I think it looks a little too, if you use like black and white or black and water, it just ends up looking almost kind of flat and dead. Ground is drying. It's not too, too curly on me here. <laughs> you can lift that back up though too. So just add some water onto your brush and kind of scrub it a little bit. Loosen that paint up. You just put some plain water in your brush. See how it pushes the paint back? So like here, if you think this is a little dark, kind of scrub it to lift that paint, kind of reactivate it, and then take your water and push it. See how that'll light that, lighten that up a little bit? I don't want that puddle. There we go. All right, everything is pretty wet. So we are going to start in on the hat, which is not touching anything. I'm going to continue to use this number three. So for the hat, I'm going to dampen it. And I have a little bit more water than I did on the background. So you can kind of see sitting up on it a little bit. It's a little glossy. And I'm going to use um, the color I have listed is called um, Cobalt Violet Light. It's a Sennelier color, but you can, it's a little more opaque, but you can use um, Theo Violet if you have it, or any kind of a light primrosey pinky color. I was afraid of that. So it's that kind of purpley color there. Let's get that back. There we go. All right, so this is still pretty wet, so I'm going to see how when I tap it in, it just kind of moves a little bit. And it does that because I have more paint and my brush is more wet than my paper. So the paint wants to come off my brush onto the paper. It wants to move to the area that is a higher moisture content. Just push that in a little bit. We're going to let that dry. We're going to do the same thing on each side of his head here on his little earmuffs. So go ahead and 
put in a pretty large amount of water, like I said, so it's almost sitting up on the paper, which when you're working with this type of paper that's got a lot of sizing in it, it will sit up on top of the paper for you. And then pick up some of that nice pink and just tap that in. This would be a situation where if you thought uh, you didn't feel like waiting for it and you wanted to maybe use a hair dryer on it or um, don't use a hair dryer, use a heat tool or something that's going to add heat but is not going to actually physically push and create air. So here that was still too wet, so I'm just going to pick that up. Ah, too impatient. I'll let that dry. We'll come back and put a little more gray back in it. Push back it in there. There. That is still wet, so let's get rid of some of that color. Oh yeah, that's fine. You don't have to put the earmuffs on if you don't want. So I think while that's drying, because that is going to take a few seconds because we have a lot of water on there, we can do his arms. And the way that we have to jump around here, that is really common with watercolor. Got a little pill there. There we go. So we'll do his arms here. And I'm going to mix up some burnt umber. So I've got some burnt umber there, and I'm just filling them in. I'm going to hold my brush, and I'm going to give it a little twist. I want more color in that. Let's pick some more up. I want that to be a little bit more opaque. There we go. Give it a look, keep your perpendicular brush, give it a little wiggle. It's got this little branch down here. Okay, so you got the little arm in there. I'm going to flip this around and do the other one. Make certain I am still in frame, yep. I'm moving, if you'll notice, I am always moving in the direction that the grain of the wood would be. Come up underneath my little birdie there. On the back side of him, push down a little bit to get a little thicker line. And then I'm lightening up on my pressure as I pull the brush off the paper and I'm giving it a little wiggle. Some little twiggy branches for his little fingers, appendages, whatever you want to call them. All right, so this is all very much the same color. I'm going to pick up a little bit of the Payne's Gray. If your paint is getting a little bit dry, give it a spritz. Okay, I got a little bit of Payne's Gray that I added into my Burnt Umber. And give him some little lines for some... some bark, some little barky lines. And we're going to put a little bit of some green tufts there also. So it looks kind of like he's got some 
that case from a pine branch. Okay. I would get a little darker on this side here as well. So I just put a little bit of Payne's Gray in with my Burnt Sienna. It's okay if you leave a little bit of white showing through. That is definitely something you want to do with watercolors. Make sure that you're leaving some some white paper showing. Okay. And I'm not using a liner brush. I'm just using this number three, but I'm using a very light, light text pressure. And I'm keeping my brush fairly perpendicular to my paper. So that's its little end where they stuck the branch into his body. All right. Wow, his face looks a hot mess. get a little bit more definition on there. That's better. All right, we're gonna do the pom-pom on top of the hat. And we're gonna do that purple. So I'm gonna wet that down. My hat is still a little bit wet, so I'm not gonna to touch that too much. I don't care if it bleeds a little bit, but I don't want it to come and be a big, I want it to still be able to tell here's the hat and here's the pom-pom. So I'm leaving a little bit of space. So I've got the dioxazine purple on that wet. See how it kind of spreads out and looks kind of fuzzy like a pom-pom would. I'm also making sure that I don't cover every single little bit of paper, every single little bit of the white from my paper, I should say. So if you can kind of see that. All right, I'm going to also do the same thing with some purple on my earmuffs, just some dots. So I want to be able to see the little bit of pink still through it. So see, it gives it that nice fuzzy look because now this side here I redid, so this is really wet, so I'm not gonna do that side. And then I want to do, there's kind of a little knitted zigzag look that I did on the hat and it's fairly dry. So I'm gonna do that and I thinned out my Daxacene Purple a little bit more so it's not quite as dark as that on the pom-pom. Let's pull some of these out here. And I'm going to do a little zigzag pattern. Whoa, too much water. All right, well, we can tighten that up. And tap that in. I'm not going as tight up to the face there again, like I said, because it was still a little bit wet. So now I just have a damp brush and I just want to soften this edge a little bit. I'm just tapping it on there so some of the paint migrates out. Let's get some of that real dark purple. Get that right up next to the face. There we go. And some real dark purple there. Okay. Okay. All right, 
his face is kind of drying. So I think that we can start to, yeah, that's still too wet on the hat. And we don't want to do this brim here because that's in all, that would be all sorts of problems with the hat being a little wet and the earmuffs being a little wet and everything else being a little wet. So I think we can do his buttons, which are lumps of coal. And you're gonna take your Payne's Gray and mix that really concentrated. And then you're gonna add a tiny little bit of your burnt umber so it's not quite as blue, especially the Sennelier is very, very blue Payne's Gray. And you'll end up with this really inky dark color right here. Now, if you have black, you can certainly use black, but that's the color we're going for. Okay, and you want it, like I said, really fairly thick because we want these to be somewhat opaque. So I'm going to use my brush and tap in kind of an irregular looking, and I'm leaving that little highlight kind of an irregular little square, like a charcoal briquette. Okay. All right. I don't know if I'm brave enough to do his eyes. We're gonna do the same thing with the eyes. So if you are uncomfortable with this size brush, you can go down to a smaller brush. I have this brush, it is a little double aught. And you wanna fill in his little briquettes, but you want to try, if possible, try and leave that highlight. Don't sweat it if you accidentally go over it because we can go back and put it in with um, a white pen or our white gouache. Okay, you can clean off your brush, thin out the paint a tiny little bit and I don't know why they're here again. I like to give them a little bit of an eyebrow, a little bit of a shadow. Go back and redefine those areas here that I lost. This is just the leftover paint that's on my brush. Don't touch those briquettes though, because they are wet. So now clean off your brush and dry it off and then pick up a little bit of a highlight right next to that hard highlight. Oh, too much water on my brush. That would have been somewhat disastrous. There we go. Can you see that? Okay, so just like we lifted up that little highlight on the charcoal briquettes, I cleaned off and dried off my brush. Make sure there are no drips. And I'm gonna pick up a little lighter area in the bottom corner of the briquettes on his eyes. I don't like where that is. I'm gonna actually fill it in. I'm going to realign <laughs> my highlights with my white pen. Just put a little more shadow down here.
All right. So we don't want to work on his nose yet because it's too close to his eyes and his eyes are still wet. But I think we'd be okay if we did his scarf. So the scarf is a little bit more pink. Again, um, you can use, I use the cobalt violet, but you could use alizarin crimson with a little bit of violet in it. You could use theo violet. So I'm going to just lightly dampen his scarf. I'm leaving a little bit of space by his arm because I think mine anyway, the arm is still a little bit wet. If you want to take a second and hit it with the hairdryer, that would be definitely the safer move. Okay, pick up a little bit of that cobalt violet, which is actually kind of pink. We're going to tap that in. So we're going to tap that in along the edges, the top and bottom edges of the scarf, and try and leave a little bit of a lighter area in this middle area here of the scarf. So I'm tapping it in on the top and the bottom. little dry. So I'm going to go back in with just a little bit of water. All right. We'll do the same thing down here. Oh yeah, that is dry as a bone. That's not going anywhere. So if your paper dries out on you, just go ahead and re-wet it before you put your color in. See how that is not moving at all? That is because my paper is completely dried out on me. So what I did is, well, I had, I mean, I'd already put the paint down. So I cleaned up my brush, pick up a tiny little bit of water, start in the center, kind of bring that out and touch it to the edges, the wet edges of the paint, and it will kind of migrate in. And I'm just going to pull some of that color down into that little fold of that scarf that's going downwards. Okay. All right, so this up here is dry, and we want to get a little bit more colored along the edges so it doesn't look flat. There. All right, we've got a lot there to dry. Things are starting to curl up on me too. All right, so in our pom-poms, we actually want to get some dots of really, really dark. So get yourself a very heavy concentration of purple. Quite a heavy concentration. Mix it up on your palette. Get it loaded all the way through your brush. 
We're going to dot this because we want to leave some areas of really dark color. We're not trying to do a polka dot. We're trying to do like the shadows that would be in between maybe the yarn that's kind of looking out towards you. So while all of this is drying, and I know there's a lot, and everybody wants to get right to the nose, but we've got to wait on that, we're going to do the little birdie. So you can use cad red, you can use pyrrole red, you could use any nice dark orangey kind of red that you've got. And he is itty bitty. So you can either use your number three or four, even your double odd if you want. And I'm going to use this bright red here that comes in the Sennelier kit. It is called bright red. That's appropriate. And I just put a little bit on my brush. I hope you can see that. I'm just going to kind of draw him in. He does not need to have a lot of detail. But I am leaving a little bit of white show through. On his breast and on the tip of his wing. And I was thinking maybe he was kind of a cardinal. So he's got that little crest. I'm leaving a little bit of white around the eye, if you can. And I'm not painting in the beak. Not yet. All right, we're going to let that dry a little bit. If we, He's kind of little, so if we try and go in now and give any detail, it's going to just end up looking a little messy. So, But his face is dry enough that we can go ahead and undo his nose. So his nose is a color that I use called Sennelier Orange. Um, you can use Cad Red Light if you happen to have that. You can use Vermilion if you have that. And you're going to thin it out quite a bit. You want to be able to see through it at this point. Tap off your brush to get that little dot of paint off the end. We're just going to draw in his nose. Draw in the shape of his carrot. All right, then you're going to take your brush, you're going to clean it off. You're going to pick up the tiniest little bit of lemon yellow. So I've got the lemon, as you can see, my orange, my lemon yellow right here. Pick up a little bit of that. And you're going to fill in the center of his carrot, and you're going to let the yellow and the orange blend together. See? I want this to be a little pointier here. So I've got a clean brush. And I'm just going to use it to pull out some of that orange. A little bit pointier there. There we go. I like that better. Let that just dry and do its thing. All right. I think our birdie's probably dry enough now. So take your tiny little brush. that better, Sue? OK, 
Okay. So pick up some of that dark, almost black color that you mixed for the charcoal. And now it should have probably kind of condensed itself back down again. And you're going to draw in his little beak. And his beak is black, basically black. A little dot for his eye. Okay, kind of go around the edge of his wing. Oh, my brush split on me. So I'm going to dry it off and I think I can clean that up. Yep. Now, if you don't feel comfortable doing that, I would not in any way blame you. There is no shame in using your Micron pen for that beak and that eye. I have a very unruly brush here that wants to separate. There. And then a little bit of an edge on the back there. There we go. Give it the little feathers. Yeah, that's a little thicker. And we'll go back with a little bit of gouache or your white pen also. But yes, he's pretty tiny. You gotta put your cheaters on to do him. All right, we'll do the brim here of the hat. And that is a little bit more pink again. But it's a little bit lighter, so go ahead and fill in with some water. And see how I'm living on the edge there? That drip. Ooh, that could be bad. Oh, there is an owl outside my window. I can hear him hooting already. So try and leave a little lighter edge on the very top there where the brim of the hat meets the crown of the hat. See how his nose is kind of blending? I like that. All right, his face is dry enough. We're just going to go in and give him five little black dots for his mouth. And that is that burnt sienna. Excuse me, um, burnt umber and Payne's gray. Nice and dark, really nice and dark. And I'm using my small brush here. Trying to get those bristles to stay together. And they're not cooperating. Mm, I think he's only going to get four. Any questions so far? He's starting to come together. All right, my scarf is dry enough. I'm going to go in and put my little zigzag in. Now, I want that purple initially to be a little bit more thinned out, so I'm using the dioxazine purple. I'm using my 2 aught liner, and I'm just doing a very loose little zigzag and like I said I want it to be a little bit 
thicker of a line and I want it to be fairly transparent, we'll go back and we will actually define it a little bit more with some dark purple and it kind of makes it look a little bit more 3D. So I'm just painting in that knot, just with the purple. Ooh, that was a little much. Clean up my brush, pick some of that up. You don't have to do everything in one pass. If you need to go back over it, that is totally fine. There. All right, his brim is dry enough that I'm gonna give a little, this little like ribbing I really want to kind of tighten up around the edges of his eyes here. So I mixed a really, really dark Payne's gray. There. So on the end of his arms, fingers, whatever you want to call them, I did these little tufts of greenery. And you don't have to do that if you don't want to. But how I did it was I used the green, the lighter green that's in this kit. Um, it is called Thalo Green Light. And I just got a lot of it on my brush, quite wet, and I kind of made a, just a splotchy area of it. Now it's going to dry a whole lot lighter than you're seeing. And then we'll go back after that dries and we'll use our darker green and kind of draw in some of the pine boughs. This will just be a little bit of background color. Okay. All right, he's starting to come along. All right, so go ahead and pick up some of the, your red like you used on your bird, that orangey red. And we're actually gonna put a few little dashes on our nose here. So, you can barely see it, but we're gonna go back with a little bit of white. So it's gonna end up being more noticeable. Just make sure that your nose is dry before you do it. Let's do a little more eyebrow. There. Okay.
All right, so to get that kind of almost a little bit of a 3D type effect on the hat and the scarf, I mix up a more concentrated of the dioxazine purple. And I load it onto a nice finely pointed brush. And I'm going to go on the top and the bottom, the top, the bottom. So hopefully you can see this. I'm going on the top side and the bottom side. Top, bottom, top, bottom. See? Isn't that cool? See, I don't know, I just think that really emphasizes that kind of knitted look. We'll do it on the, so you're gonna do it on the left-hand side of the right-hand side of the hat, and then when you get to the middle, you're gonna switch and do it on the other side. So you'll do it on the right-hand side of the left-hand side. See? And do the same thing on the scarf. Bottom, top, bottom, top. Kind of do that little knot. And we'll do that down here. And this isn't black, this is just the dioxazine purple mixed really strong. See how cool that looks? All right, so I've got a little paint left and I'm gonna put the fringe. I'm just pulling out some fringe. All right. Now I'd say it's time for some highlights here. Oh, this is dry. We can do the little bits of our evergreen. So um, you could use, I happen to have forest green deep or dark. Um, you can also just add a little bit of the dioxazine purple to your green. That gives you a really nice dark green. Or you can use sap green or hooker's green dark. Any of those work. So I'm going to tap and pull. And just pull out a few little wisps here. You see I haven't had to reload my brush. We'll do that again down here. Try and use really light pressure.
So now you can either use, we're going to do some highlights and you can either use a white pen or you can use some white gouache. Oh, where'd that go? I left that out here. So you can also use some white gouache. Whichever you prefer. If you are going to use the white gouache, just make sure that you put it on a clean spot on your palette because it will pick up everything else. And I'm going to start with some little highlights on his nose and on his face and eyes. So I get a little bit of water on my brush and I'm just going to go into the edge of the gouache. So I'm just going to kind of pick up a little bit from the edge here. And I want this fairly opaque. I'm loading up my brush really well. See how I'm working it through the bristles? And I'm rolling my brush in the paint. So I get a nice little point. Like I said, you can certainly use your pen instead if you want. So I'm going to put a little highlight right here on his eyes. A little semicircle there. And you want to make sure that they're both going in the same direction. We'll put a couple little dots down there. Okay. I'm going to do some little highlights to kind of go along the grooves of his nose. Oops, I got a little big. Do a little of one on top of each of his little bits on his mouth there. I think I might do a few little kind of around the bottom edge of the coal. Oh, we'll go crazy here. We'll do a few little stripes on top of his branch. Now my paint is kind of wearing off my brush, which I like. I'm getting a nice little dry brush effect. Okay, I'm going to go in and get a little tiny bit more and I'm going to put a little bit separating out my beak, a little dot on his eye, a little bit on the top of his crest on my birdie, top edge of my wing. There's hardly any paint on my brush. I'm basically just dry brushing this. I hope y'all can see that. So I still had brush on my paint on my brush, but I want to move it around a little bit. Uh oh, your eye wasn't dry. Just let it dry and go back over it, Sue. there. So you kind of have to be careful too when you're doing the red and the white. You generally don't want your cardinal to be pink. So if it gets a little bit too light, just go back in with a little bit more red. See? Oh, I almost did that with the red. All right, we're getting there.
I have not added his feet yet, so so I'm going to pick up. Um, there again, feel free if you want to use your pen. I'm going to do it with this really tiny little brush I have. It, it, you know, you don't even have to put them on if you don't want to. They really don't show. You see that? I might do a little extra black dot around his eye there. Make it a little bigger. There we go. I like that better. Okay. My guy needs a little rhinoplasty. His nose got a little big. That's okay. All right, looking kind of cute, huh? All right, so time for Navon's favorite part. We're gonna put on some metallic. And I am going to be using the Paul Rubens. You can absolutely use Fine Tech. I love them both. You can also use the Niji if you have that. Heck, you can use the Walmart brand, you can use Hobby Lobby, you can use anything you've got. So I'm gonna use this number three brush again, and I'm going to, I have these two colors here that I really like. Now I did his feet with the, um, the Payne's Gray mixed with the Burnt Umber. So this color here is just a white pearl and this color right here you can kind of see is an interference gold. And you'll also have both of those colors in with the um, fine tech. So I'm wetting these and I'm really letting them get activated. Okay. And we really want this to be thick and creamy. And we're going to kind of sweep it on some areas. So there you can see on my brush. And we're going to kind of go along the highlighted areas. And I'm just tapping it on. And it's not going to cover it but it's going to give it that reflectivity that we want. So don't cover the entire thing because you need to have contrast between the shiny areas and the not shiny areas. So I've got it on my brush still. I'm going to give a little sweep on my coal right in the center. I'm going to give a little bit on the sides of his face here, kind of up into his cheeks. Use it to kind of bring his nose in a little bit. All right, I'm going to go along these little ridges of his nose. And I'm going to go on the highlight of his eye. Okay, alrighty. Gold and the um, iridescent white. So in the fine tech, it would be um, called pearl. I think it's just called white pearl. Okay, and then on the, so you know how we did the dark purple on the opposite edge? We're going to do a little bit of the white pearl and you don't have to do this if you don't want to I think it just makes it look kind of three-dimensional on the top edge of the hat here that hat brim give that hat a little separation put a few dots just around the top edge of the 
your muffs, make it look fuzzy. On his pom pom. Again, kind of concentrate them up towards the top semicircular edge here. See that? Get a little bit on that scarf. There again on the opposite edge from where we did the dark shadow. And you don't have to do it on every one. We just want to hit it a little bit. And I'm also going to put a little bit in his fringe of his scarf. A few little sweeps. Blend that in. Can you see that? All right, I'm going to do a little tiny bit on the top of my birdie, top edge of his wing. All right, so that is the white pearl. Now we're going to use that interference gold. Um, if you don't have it, don't worry about it, but you don't need to use it necessarily. It adds just another little layer of color. It's funny because when you first put it on, you think, oh, well, that's the exact same color I just used. But when it dries, it does dry a different type of a sheen. So it gives it more texture. And I'm just dabbing it in kind of randomly. There again, I'm not trying to give him a completely um, consistent glazing of this. I'm just trying to hit a few areas that will maybe look a little bit interesting. All right, I think he looks pretty cute. I just happen to have a little bit of this orangey color on my brush, so. Don't want to let her go to waste. There we go. All right, we are ready to do a few swirls in our snow. So it's not a true gold, Navon. It's an interference gold. Can you see the difference? It's not gold gold. It When you look at it straight on, it looks white. But when you look at it from the edge, it looks golden. All right, we're gonna do some swirls in our snow. So I'm gonna use a little bit bigger brush. So compared to what we've been using, I'm gonna use a six. I'm gonna wet it down. I'm going to take some of my white pearl and I'm going to mix it in with my, with my dioxazine purple, see? Now, if you had this color already pre-mixed in your iridescent colors, go right ahead and use it. Um, but this way you don't have to buy another palette if you don't have it. Just mix the iridescent in with the dioxazine. Yep, you can use Fine Tech. Um, in Fine Tech, what is the interference called? You know, it's in your, um, the iridescent set. And I don't remember the exact name of it. Let me look at it here. Oh, I don't think it gives it to me on the palette. I think I have to look at the box. No, nope, not that one. So 
So it's in this set here. That's his inner iridescent. And it would be this one right here on the end. See how sometimes it looks white and sometimes it looks gold. That is in the in irides in that iridescent set. If you don't have it, don't worry about it. You could just add a little bit of regular gold in with the white as well. All right. So I've got that purple on my brush. And I'm going to give myself some big swirls here. It's really loaded up. My brush is really loaded up. I'm going to go nice and slow. Give myself this big curly cue. Bring that all the way around so it kind of comes up underneath him. And maybe I'll do a few kind of coming down this way. And maybe one coming up here. See how I'm going slow? So the paint can catch up with what I have on my brush. With my move motion. So I put a little extra of the purple on there because I want a little bit of a shadow. Alright, and I'm going to do the same thing with that white and the um, cerulean blue that we have. And that will give us this pretty metallic -y aqua color that's like right here. Put a couple of those swirls kind of on him. And a couple of them coming up into the sky. And you don't have to go too crazy with these. They can get maybe a little overwhelming. Just a few. Okay. And now we're going to do a little bit of white and some snow splatters and we will be all done. thin out his nose it's kind of bugging me lift up a little bit of that orange Now if I do that, I think I need that extra of the black, another little spot for his mouth. Well, there it's going spreading all over. Maybe we'll splatter it and come back to that. Okay. 
I'm gonna. All right, let's get him a little splatter. You guys ready for some splatter? All right, so use a little bit bigger brush. And mix up your gouache nice and thick. You don't want it to be too thin. If it's too thin, it will just kind of spread out and look kind of milky and it's not going to leave actual dots. If you really want to control it a lot more like Jan does, you can always um, take your pen and draw them in and then you can really control it. But what I'm going to do, get the rest of my paints out of the way, is I loaded up this brush here and it's wet and really loaded but it's not thinned out so it's transparent um, you can use a lot of different things if you don't want to use gouache paint you can use um, no bleed white or white ink all sorts of things so but I've got my brush loaded up and I'm just going to splatter now the thicker your paint is the smaller your little snow splatters will be. The thinner your paint is, the larger they will be. But you really gotta load your brush up. You can use a fan brush for this also. There we go. And I put it all over. I like him to be covered. them. You don't want them all going the same direction either. Ooh, kind of covered up my bird a bit much. So if you get a little too much in a spot that you don't want to cover up completely, just blot it off while it's wet. See? And it softens the whole look, I think, anyway. So now while I still have that white on there, I'm going to kind of go along the edges of some of my swirls. Now this brush might be a little big, but I'm going to give it a go anyway. <laughs> Luckily it's watercolor, so it'll come right off. And I think one little swirl kind of in his eye splattered with white gouache.
So I think we are all done. He looks pretty cute. <laughs> You're supposed to go down with your splatters, Navon, not back up. <laughs> Isn't he sweet? Look how cute that is. He's adorable. Or she. Or whatever. Non-binary. Yeah, I think I might have to go back and put a little bit more red back on my bird. Got a little over splattered. All right, and don't forget to sign. So these will be super adorable cards or in a little frame, a little pink frame or even a little lavender frame I think would be really, really cute. Any last questions, guys? No? All right, well, then I'm going to sign off, and I want to thank you for tuning in. I know this was last minute, but um, my schedule is a little crazy, and I just wanted to be able to work it in for you. Oh, you did a 9 by 12 Wow, Navon, you're pretty dang ambitious. I would definitely get that frame then. And make sure I want to see pictures of them posted on the classroom page, too. So thanks again. I love you guys so much. Yes, please, put your pictures up. Put the pictures up. I want to see them. All right, have a good night. Love you. Bye.